over in Utrecht uh, this year in 2012. Uh, I uh, am a co-director of uh, my studio, Analog Studio, with uh, Mike Merrin and Arvid Nicholson. And uh, I went over to EUE to uh, talk about uh, the, the Swarm commercial that our studio recently did earlier in the year. And uh, following that, uh, a little talk about the making of these uh, watch idents that I was working on uh, at the same time, actually, as uh, the Swarm was in production. So uh, I recorded some text uh, at the actual event. I recorded the session live, but the audio didn't uh, come out too good, unfortunately. So uh, I'm just briefly re-recording it uh, as uh, we watch through the videos. So uh, let's watch the commercial first, uh, The Swarm. <laughs> So that was the finished commercial. It was a really fun project for us to work on. It's uh, always fun to, to do destruction and explosions and uh, alien invasions. So uh, this is one of the very first uh, previous animations that Arvid knocked together in a half an hour or so. Uh, after reading through the first version of the, uh, the script and storyboard. And uh, this was the next version assembled from uh, the director's uh, artwork boards. Arvid uh, chopped them up, added a little bit of motion in After Effects and uh, intercut it with a um, more developed animatic. You can see from the layout here the the commercial was uh, laid out very early on. There was uh, the buildings, placement of the buildings and so on were uh, established very early. But uh, the original move was a lot different. Um, a lot longer, as you can see in, in this uh, little test render as well. Uh, this was uh, put together by Simon, Simon Reeves, who we work uh, with regularly, one of our favourite uh, artists to work with. This is uh, a V-Ray Sky system, it's like a cached lighting setup, a light cache. The environment to lighting doesn't change so much um, over 10-15 seconds, so uh, we just uh, rendered the animated object separately. And uh, here we can see a more evolved version with a lot of little 2D layers, map painting being dropped in the back, a lot of fires on roofs. Uh, the commercial was shot in uh, South Africa and uh, uh, Arvid went down there with Joyrider Films, uh, the production company we were working with, uh, to do the shoot. All the street scenes were dressed to look uh, a little more English. You can see now as the edits evolved, there's a lot more ride shots, uh, live action ride shots that were shot uh, second unit and dropped into the edit. And uh, now we have a few uh, little render elements, little render tests, uh, for some big rolling fume simulations, various explosions. Uh, these were generated just to populate the scene. A lot of these were only two or three sim uh, simulations uh, that were rendered from various angles and then composited uh, in different places in a 3D composite. Uh, this is the crashing Chinook helicopter with a big fume sim coming off of it. So here you can see the original uh, opening move doing like a corkscrew roller coaster move which is featured in the ride and then shooting down towards the plane. And uh, in the original move here we swung underneath the wing of the plane, just like uh, the ride does in reality, but uh, that bit was cut off the end. And here are some uh, little explosion elements for one of the buildings as we fly over. So here I've opened up uh, one of the 3D master scenes, one of the environment uh, master scenes, uh, so we can see all the buildings in the make up our street scene and some uh, low-res textures on there. 
can see we had uh, a lot of little assets to build, little cars and um, car parking spaces. Simon did a really uh, great job uh, texturing up the roads and things. He had a lot of uh, his own assets from other projects that he's that he's done that he uh, threw into the scene. So uh, the early on the the, la the, uh, the layout of the street probably uh, was the longest part of the project actually. Um, while the shoot was going on, we were trying to figure out what the street was going to look like, and there's a lot more work than you think uh, that goes into building something like a street scene because there's just a lot of little details that you'd expect to be in there, just from the bus stop sign to the to the railings in the middle and the traffic lights. So all those little details are going to help uh, make the scene look more realistic. And uh, it wasn't a particularly high poly scene, but uh, the more and more details that you you add in there the heavier it's going to get. So here in the viewport as we scrub through we can see a little bit of the original beginning. Uh, there's a little garden down there that was uh, this was projection mapped onto uh, objects down there and uh, onto the things like a crash car. Because our camera move was uh, at this stage locked off now it was, it was critical to have a locked off camera move early on so we knew what we had to build and what to detail up. You know there's no point detailing the back of these buildings too much if we're never going to see them. So a lot of the texturing work was done kind of as a, as a camera view, uh, camera dependent. So uh, things were projection painted uh, down onto models, just lining up uh, photographs of destruction in, in cars and painting them down onto, onto models. So now we're inside uh, 3ds Max, uh, another scene inside 3ds Max, and uh, there was even little Apache helicopters flying around in the background that get blown up. And uh, the, there was no need for these to be particularly amazing models that were so far away. So you can see here it's just a a stock model with some bad topology and uh, just the rotors and the body attached to some control nulls, simple nulls that were just keyframed uh, flying around in the background. Some of them blow up, some of them don't. Here you can see uh, a little fume simulation that's going to run uh, on the bus stop or something that's blowing up. It looks like uh, it's like a little shop with a bus stop outside. And uh, there's like a little omni light inside which is animated to uh, light up as a little explosion comes out, throws some debris out. A lot of the effects work was quite simple stuff. It was just uh, particle flow systems and uh, lots of ray fire uh, events that were just cached and moved around to populate the scene. And uh, little fume simulations run on top of those. And uh, so this is uh, the helicopter crashing into the front of the building. You don't see too much of the nice destruction that happens here uh, in the final commercial because the, there's so much smoke and fire but uh, Arvid set this up with uh, using a cloth system and uh, we used uh, super measure to uh, cache this because uh, they were breaking vertices and changing cha changing vertex counts which uh, normally you cannot uh, point cache because the point order needs to stay the same but uh, super measure is a great little tool that helps out with that. So a lot of destruction in the scene and, and little uh, areas that could be cached we, we used uh, super mesher to cache those out. So here we've just got a small uh, simple fume source uh, being emitted uh, from the helicopter. The fume grid is attached uh, to the helicopter and then we're just faking the direction of the simulation by blowing some wind uh, through the grid. There's a small rotor fire going on there. There are a lot of uh, layers, a lot of elements we generated uh, for this commercial. So we, you know, small fires on the rotors, uh, secondary smoke simulations, little uh, bits of office paper flying out the windows there in the background. It's a lot of fun to generate uh, elements and scenes like this.
So here's just the uh, the cache file of the building uh, getting torn apart. Simple uh, geometry as you can see, but uh, another uh, detail that can add a lot of realism to the scene. Here is the uh, larger simulation for the helicopter rotors. There's a particle source there firing out uh, with a short age span and uh, deleting quite quickly, generating small fire but a lot of smoke. And uh, this worked out really nicely uh, with the camera move. The camera move swoops up through this smoke, just missing it, and uh, it really added a lot of depth to the scene. We really felt like uh, the helicopter was spiraling out of control and uh, travelling quite some distance away from camera. So this uh, this single effects element really helped uh, pull the viewer into the shot a little bit more. It was quite a long simulation, the spacing was quite uh, small and um, although the grid wasn't huge there were a lot of sub steps because the helicopter was moving quite quickly and the rotors were moving very quickly. So uh, I think we just left it going overnight a couple of times. Uh, so now this is a simple, um, extremely simple particle flow system set up for the swarm itself, um, made of little uh, flying alien spaceships. These little alien ships uh, kind of look like little little bats. They uh, were based uh, directly on the design of the uh, the roller coaster. Uh, the the kind of this shape with little seats for people to sit sit in underneath. So uh, it's very low res, simple instance geometry here, uh, and uh, a number of uh, force operators, different wind strengths, negative wind, turbulence, some drag. It's basically controlled by a, a spherical negative wind, just keyframed, as you can see there, the strength is keyframed, um, moving across the screen, so it kind of sucks all the particles towards it, but then there's other wind systems and drag systems in there to uh, run turbulence through and uh, different uh, animations of the strength of influence and, and uh, decay on these uh, created a nice realistic swarming effect a little bit like uh, the sentinels in the matrix movies swarming around and then shooting down and picking people up picking kids off BMX's apparently So here we have uh, a little uh, composite breakdown, kindly put together by um, Urban, one of our lead compositors on the project. You can see here uh, from the base render a lot of different passes and layers going on. The buildings that were rendered out separately, uh, depth and alien uh, laser beams, smoke hits, helicopters in the background, little embers in the sky which I believe were generated in uh, After Effects and layered in. Uh, before uh, having a final grade on our in-house DaVinci Resolve. So uh, that just about covers it for the material that I presented at uh, this year's end user event. Obviously it's uh, not the full length hour talk unfortunately. Uh, there was a lot of Q&A at the end of the talk and uh, it was uh, good fun to meet everybody and discuss uh, different workflows and methodologies doing this kind of work. So uh, thank you for watching the presentation, uh, making your videos, and uh, I'll play the commercial one last time.